Welcome biologists to this spec point A and B on classification and evolution. So these are quite quick spec points as some you might have met at GCSE as well. So um, the first one here is looking at taxonomic hierarchy. But before we do that, we need to know what a species is. So a species is where two individuals can breed together to produce fertile offspring. Now this individual in this picture below, you can see this is a liger. So this is the offspring of a tiger and a lion. Now a liger is infertile. So what that shows us is that the tiger and the lion are different species. They are not members of the same species. Um, so we need to know that individuals of the same species can breed together to produce fertile offspring. So a tiger and a lion can breed together, but they don't produce fertile offspring. Now we need to be able to put our different taxonomic um, taxons within the right order. So the way that I remember that is using this mnemonic, which you might have met at GCC. So decide, king, prawn, curry, or fat, greasy, sausage. You basically just need to know what the letters stand for. So in some exam questions, they might ask you to put it in the right order. They might ask you to fill in the blanks. It's quite a straightforward question, this one. You just need to remember the order of the different taxons. So here's an example of um, the classification of three different cats. If you want to pause it and have a quick look at those to try and identify which ones are more closely related and why, you do so now. So as you can see in these particular examples, they all share the same kingdom, phylum, class, order and family. However, the leopard cat and the fishing cat share the same genus but the sand cat doesn't. The sand cat's in a different genus. So what this tells us just from looking at the classification names is that the leopard cat and the fishing cat are more closely related than the sand cat is. And you can see that the fishing cat and the leopard cat are different species because they have different species names. So they share the same genus, but they have different species name. So it is well worth making yourself aware of that because I've seen several exam questions where you have to be able to identify the genus and the species name from the question. So the binomial naming systems, again, quite straightforward, really. Um, the name Homo sapien, that's us, that's humans. Um, now, when you write in the binomial naming system, so bi stands for two, so two names. Um, this is the genus name and this is the species name. Now, whenever you're writing this, they either need to be in italics or underlined. So if you're like me and you can't physically write in italics very well, I advise in the exam that you put the underline instead of trying to write in italics. Another thing to notice here is that the, um, the genus name is in a capital letter, whereas in the species name, it's a lowercase. So regardless of whether you do it in italics or underlined, you have to make sure that the genus name's in uppercase uh, and then the species name starts with a lowercase letter. So here are some examples. If you want to have a pause the video and have a go at figuring out if they're correct or incorrect, do so now. So let's go through those answers. So that first one here, this first one is incorrect because it needs to be either in italics or underlined. This um, second one, this is, is, although it's in italics, this is incorrect because the species name has uh, an uppercase letter and it should have a lowercase letter here. Number three is correct. We have a capital letter at the beginning of genus, a lowercase and the beginning of species, and it's underlined. It could either be in italics or underlined. Number four is incorrect because we needed a capital letter here for the genus. And number five is correct. It's in italics. We have a capital letter in the beginning of the genus and a lowercase in the species. So those are those spec points covered. Let's take a quick look at an exam question. So um, if you want to pause the video and have a quick read of that and try and figure it out yourself, remember we should be um, underlining key things in the question to help us figure out the answer. So in this question, we should be underlining the words Mellis Mellis. That's the name of the European badger, which you can see in this picture here. And it also tells us it's a member of, the, of this family as well. Now, it also tells us the American badger belongs to a different genus um, within the same family. So we're now looking for which one of these is the American badger. Now, you do not need to know all of the names of all organisms ever known to man, but you just need to be able to identify which are the correctly named ones. So we can rule out B and C because they aren't cor correctly um, demonstrated in the binomial naming system. So it's between A and D. Now, it tells us here that it's a different genus. So if it's a different genus to Mellis Mellis, we can rule out A. So the answer for this one is D. So guys, good luck with your exams. Don't forget to use, don't use the words it, they, amount, or size.